lot of new faces on the channel since I last had the chance to sit down and just chat with you guys. So today I am very excited to answer some of your questions and give some pretty big channel updates. Spoiler alert, the channel is getting a new name. So if you wanna hear what that is, then stick around to the end of the video. Or I guess you could just wait like three days and then you'll see the channel name change uh, on YouTube, but you should, you should watch to the end of this video. There are so many outside world noises happening right now. Um, there's uh, someone leaf blowing directly outside of my studio, trucks going by, airplanes going over, and I'm pretty sure that unless my ears have just started ringing, there's cricket noises somewhere, either in here or outside. So it's really cool. Yeah. I hugely appreciate all of you who submitted questions to me last week. There were so many good ones. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to get to all of them, but I've narrowed them down a little bit to the most asked and what I thought was the most interesting. And I'm going to be selecting these questions at random from this witch's hat, because it was the only hat that I had readily available. Tells you a lot about the way I live my life. And our first absolutely burning audience question is, do you live in Michigan? No? Are our phones eerily like the One Ring? Addictive, precious, etc. In some ways, yeah. I, I think that at least Tolkien probably would have thought so if he lived today. He was not a fan of industrialization, and, and I think that the Ring and the powers of evil within Middle-earth are often easy to compare, and it's helpful to compare them to modern technological advances, so I think he would probably think so. Personally, I, I see the Ring as an overtly evil tool. It's something that turns all of our actions evil no matter what. Whereas phones and the internet and most modern technology I see as more of a neutral force. It's something that could be used for good and could be used for evil. And of course it, it's easily corruptible, but I, I don't see phones quite as fundamentally evil as the One Ring. Who is your favorite casting from the Lord of the Rings movies? I love all of the casting and I'll probably have to do some kind of a video about the casting in The Lord of the Rings because it's so masterful. But I would have to say Ian McKellen as Gandalf. Something that Peter Jackson and his team did is that they cast classical actors. And of course, Ian McKellen had been in lots of movies, but especially for those older roles like Gandalf and like Saruman with Christopher Lee, they pulled from a pool of actors with a background in Shakespeare. Both Christopher Lee and Ian McKellen were part of the um, Royal Shakespeare Company, I believe it's called in England, which is like the, the fanciest of all of the Shakespeare companies. So they're very classical trained actors and that kind of classical training really elevates their roles and elevates their characters which with text such as Tolkien where it's very classically inspired I think that having actors like Christopher Lee and like Ian McKellen in those roles was a really really great choice so probably either of those two but Ian McKellen is personal favorite. I love him as Gandalf. Where is your accent from? Where is my accent from? So it is currently just pretty generic Northeast uh, US. I lived in Virginia for like 10 years before this, Northern Virginia. So it's probably most specifically from that, but I also grew up with an English accent for three or four years of my childhood. So I think that has some influence and I did some work in college through my theater degree to neutralize my accent. So between that, and the fact that I tend to pick up accents from other people really quickly just because that's how my brain works. My accent probably sounds a little bit weird, but it is primarily just bland old North American. How old were you when you started reading Tolkien's works? Technically it's from when I was a child because my parents would read Tolkien to me. I tried to read it a couple of times. I had a couple of false starts all through my life. Every once in a while I'd just get it in my head, pick it up, and I'd usually abandon it halfway through fellowship. But the first time I sat down and like read, read The Lord of the Rings, I was 20 or 21 because it was during the pandemic, right around my birthday. And I had come home from my college housing to my parents' apartment and I didn't have a job. And so for a couple of weeks, I just sat down and said at least 50 pages a day. And I did at least 50 pages a day and I read The Lord of the Rings for the first time. So not all too long ago. I noticed the Dune book on your shelf. My, my little growing Dune collection. Will you ever branch out into covering anything other than Lord of the Rings? That's something I actually get asked a lot because I have Dune sitting back here and I usually reply to those comments because I am excited about it. But the overall answer is yes. I do plan on branching out and covering some other things, including Dune and Narnia and Shakespeare and 
a whole lot of other stuff. It's not official, so, you know, keep in mind that this is all subject to change. But I plan on starting a series called Foundations of Fantasy, where I begin with The Lord of the Rings, but go out into other franchises and discuss how these stories and these authors revolutionize different parts of the fantasy and sci-fi genres and really take these stories into account of the larger storytelling landscape of, of the world right now. But that's going to be my starting point. Hopefully in the next couple of months, at least by November, I want to start doing those larger videos into other franchises. So I'm very excited about that. And I hope you guys are too. Just a general inquiry on whether you intend to review Rings of Power. You discussed it very briefly when it was still pending release and you addressed it in the idea of adaptation. I'm wondering what you think now after watching the first season. I have every intention of someday talking about the Rings of Power, but my, my previous experiences with it um, and talking about it on the internet have been overwhelmingly bad. I get hit with a lot of negativity, especially because I don't love the Rings of Power, but I also don't hate it fundamentally. So that tends to, to work a lot of people up. I do want to talk about it. And as I'm gathering my thoughts, I probably will sometime soon, but I'm scared because people on the internet can be really mean. And um, I don't like, I don't like it when people are mean to me. Aha, any progress on that pond in our yard? Yes, actually, my housemate has been working on it on her days off, but as it turns out, they did fill it in previously with concrete. So it's pretty shallow, but she was able to dig it out. It only has a very little bit of water, but we're hoping that that's enough for the frogs to come to our yard because we know there are frogs in the neighborhood and we really want frog friends. Do you have plans to make videos on first age and second age characters and events in the Tolkien world? Yeah. Yeah, probably. The thing is that the first and second age are so lore dense and frankly, they've been covered by a lot of other big Tolkien channels. A lot of other big Tolkien channels, that's kind of their bread and butter is covering these topics. And I always get a little antsy when it comes to covering things that other Tolkien YouTubers have because I, I don't want to be accused of copying them. And honestly, a lot of those channels have far better knowledge of the actual lore than I do. So I get a little itchy when I think about covering those topics because I feel like I wouldn't do a great job. But someday, probably, I, I will cover more things in the first and second age. I'm just, I'm just nervous about it, you know? Have you ever considered diving into the, shall we say, interpretation of the lore in the video games like Shadow of Mordor slash War? So I would like to. I don't currently play very many video games. I used to when I was younger and then the reward system in my brain got kind of messed up so that I, I stopped finding playing video games satisfying. So I haven't played a video game in a very, very long time, but I would like to cover these games at some point. I think it's gonna be a little bit later on because I wanna do it right. And if I'm gonna be playing these games in order to figure out what the lore is, I would like to share that with you guys. So this won't become a gaming channel, but it could be nice to do some live streams or, or cut down edits of me playing these games. And in that capacity, I would probably do videos reviewing the lore of the games, but that's probably just for a little bit later on. And I'm very excited, although you guys are going to be upset to find out that I am very, very bad at video games. Do you ever experience any form of sexism from Tolkien bros? And if so, how do you respond to it? My instinct leans yes, but I would probably categorize it less as sexism and more as people on the internet being weird. I get a lot of strange questions. Um, a lot of them are about my feet, which is, you know, I guess I kind of brought that on myself, but my feet are normal. It's not like outright sexism. I think I get a lot of people because I put my face in the thumbnail coming into videos ready to disprove me or just kind of going, oh, what does she have to say? Just because I am a bit of an unusual presence in this fandom, but to a degree I'm able to use that to my advantage. I'm aware that I'm a woman and if I can weaponize that a little bit to get people to click on my videos out of outrage, then I do. Yeah, when it comes to weird or sexist comments, the way I deal with it is usually by reading them out to my coworkers, friends and housemates. And then my housemate gets incredibly angry on my behalf and shouts expletives about what she would say if she was in my position. And then by channeling my upset through her, I'm able to simply 
ignore most of the weird comments that I get, so shout out to my housemate. What inspired you to start making videos? The Lord of the Rings has been a part of my life for forever. Uh, my dad showed me the movies when I was just a wee little kid, and so it's always been on my mind and it's always something I kept coming back to and something that I found myself thinking about a lot. And then one day I was talking to my sister, Sister Allison, and I was just ranting about something Tolkien related. I think it was about his opinions on industrialization. And as I was ranting, she stopped me and she went, you should talk to the internet about this. You, you could do that. And maybe that was just because she was trying to shut me up, but it stayed with me for a while. And then once I had finished college and found out that I didn't really want to do theater anymore, which had always been my plan, I started looking into other creative endeavors and I came back to the talking about Tolkien on the internet thing. And uh, yeah, here we are. And that was our last question. And it was actually a great question to land on and that was not planned. So that's pretty good. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the juicy stuff, the channel updates. And I've been hinting slash outright stating this one for a while. So you guys may not be super surprised, but I just launched a Patreon. I have the link in the description if you want to check it out. And it is a little bit bare bones at the present, but I'm really excited for that to grow and become a point of connection between me and you guys. Before my channel kind of blew up a couple of months ago, I was able to talk to you in the comments but now that has become a little bit difficult. First off, there's just too many comments for me to reply to all of them, which is great and I really, really appreciate it. But also since my fan base expanded and my videos went out to a larger audience, I've also had more negativity in the comments. Oftentimes venturing down into the comment section leaves me a little bit more drained than when I started, which isn't really the experience that I want. So while I plan to continue reading comments, I do want to be able to back off of that a little bit. So instead, I would like to have the Patreon as a place where I get to talk to you guys. For just $2 a month, you get access to a private Discord server where you can talk to like-minded Tolkien fans of this community and, well, me about all things Tolkien, fantasy, storytelling, and, you know, just talk about my videos and stuff. The Discord and Patreon are going to have the most up-to-date announcements about the state of my channel. It's gonna be where you guys help me choose video topics and discuss video ideas as I'm writing. And it's gonna be hopefully just a really great community space. That first tier and everything going up will also include access to a fully downloadable and ad-free backlog of my videos. So if you wanna watch anything back, you can do that without ads or on the go. The second tier above that is only a couple dollars more and that allows you access to a monthly bonus video from me, including lots of fun behind the scenes content. This month, I plan on giving you a studio tour so you can see all of the things that are happening outside of this like three or four foot space, as well as tell you about the seven foot deep hole that I found in my backyard. So if you wanna hear about that, make sure that you check that out. It's kind of funny. I always said that when I got to 5,000 subscribers, that would be when I was allowed to make myself a Patreon. And for a while I was very slowly crawling towards that, but uh, now we are a little bit beyond that. So I think this is kind of overdue. Of course, you guys are under no obligation to sign up for my Patreon. You're still going to get the exact same weekly videos right here on my YouTube channel for free. But if you are interested and able to support me financially, or you want to get to know this community a little bit better, the Patreon is gonna be the best place to do that. I really, really appreciate any of you that consider signing up for my Patreon. And I just wanna, th Thank you for being here to make the Patreon worth creating. And now finally, we get to the thing that I teased at the very beginning of this video, a new name for the channel. As it turns out, the word Hobbit is in fact trademarked. And as my channel grows in size and scale, I am having more and more nightmares about being sued by the Tolkien estate. So this is kind of a long time coming and a very, very necessary step. And originally I had chosen the name Part-Time Hobbit because I had just started a part-time job. And rather than finding another part-time job on top of that to work just to pay the bills, I decided that I was gonna give this YouTube thing a real try. I tend to have problems with staying focused and actually completing projects. So it was really important for me that if I was gonna try and do this YouTube thing, I would have to treat it like a part-time job and dedicate the resources and time and energy to this project as if it was a job that actually paid me. Plus, you know, I like the way that it indicated that I'm only a hobbit part-time. I think all of us are. We can only live in the fantasy world for part of our lives, and that's important to keep in mind. But things have changed. This is becoming more and more like a full-time job, which is ironic because my 
real job is also a full-time job, so I'm just kind of working two jobs, which I wouldn't recommend, and um, I'll burn out eventually, but uh, for now, you know, who needs free time? I don't. Plus, I don't plan on just talking about being a hobbit in The Lord of the Rings. So, after much consideration, I have chosen the new name of the channel, and it is... Jess of the Shire. I figure it contains my name, which is cool, and it, it won't get me sued, which is also really cool. And you know, real Lord of the Rings nerds will still definitely get the idea of what this channel is about from a glance. I really hope you guys like the new name of the channel, because to be honest, I don't have plans of changing it anytime soon. This is a this is a very nerve-wracking process, and there's a part of me that's scared that no one will ever be able to find my videos again once I change the name of the channel, but it's fine. You know, needs must. <laughs> Either way, that's gonna bring us to the end of this video, which means that I get to ask you guys some questions. In the comments, let me know what other franchises and stories you really want me to cover on this channel. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Rings of Power now that we've had a little bit of time and space from it. Oh, and of course, the most important question of all, do you live in Michigan? Thank you all so much for liking this video, subscribing to my channel, checking out my Patreon, and just being here with me every week. I appreciate you all, and I hope that you have a very happy, hobbity day.